Hello handy viewer and welcome back to the Beard Meanies channel. I apparently can't do anything these days without videoing it and then slapping it on YouTube so why should this Sunday evening post work be any different? So I ran a poll on Twitter today to see uh, which guild I should try next in my attempts to learn various different playstyles before the release of Blacksmiths and the overwhelming response was Ox Butchers, which is interesting for reasons that will become apparent on Wednesday. Oh, if you look in the uh, bottom left-hand corner, you can see the beginnings of my blacksmith goal. Oh no, it's been covered by the tissue. You'll have to go back. So, this is the limited edition um, Kickstarter Ox that I managed to pick up through a Facebook group, which I was very pleased about. And I have already finished its flesh by the time you are done. I'm not the greatest painter in the world, but what I am is fast. Although this video is sped up, this is not how I naturally paint. Um, so I prime everything in one. I've then covered the flesh parts in the Reikland flesh shade from Games Workshop. I've then dry brushed it with pale flesh by Vallejo. That is it. That's all I do for flesh, unless it's a big chunky model like uh, Veteran Hearn, who I sort of did a more traditional method. But for models with a smaller amount of flesh, this is what I've done. Um, there is a corn red base. Um, and then hit with a hairdryer to dry it because quite frankly that is the single most important tool in my arsenal oh look the blacksmith's goal is back and unveiled again um, when it comes to speed painting is hair dryers between layers I've lightened a bit I think with Wazdaka Red and bringing that up a bit and then I think I do a final highlight in Pale Rider Red if you're curious the thing I'm holding the model in is from a Kickstarter by a chap called Rathbone, um, who I believe are a German company, and they these will be on general sale soon. But I backed this. I think about this time last year, um, and it's arrived, and I absolutely adore it to the point where I've since picked up similar products from uh, Red Beam Design. But I love the sort of the metal brace, which I'm not using at this point in the video, but I'm sure, oh, eagle-eyed handy viewer. Um, you'll spot me using it at some point. Um, I wanted, to, so despite the red trues, I wanted to go for quite a dark age look. So there's an awful lot of leather um, that I do on this model, which will allow me to spend a lot of time, oh, that's a fun angle, uh, talking about my leather recipe. So I am covering you know, the vast majority of the model at the moment in Games Workshop's dryer bark, which gives a very nice earthy base with which to work on leather. Um, I'm holding that thing at all kinds of ridiculous angles. Um, I've seen a lot of people do lighter aprons and greys and stuff, but I wanted a, quite a grim look to to my Veteranox. And Veteranox, just Captain Ox, well, this isn't Veteranox at all. Um, so there's a lot of uh, of leather to go on on this model. On top of this, I then put a very thin. Uh, coat of Mournfang Brown again by Games Workshop which you have to thin down at this stage quite a lot um, the reason being they're both uh, foundation paints or what used to be called foundation paints base paint is that what they call it now with the new names for everything so the amount of pigment in the liquid is significant which is fine if you're only doing what sort of one base coat layer but because I'm putting one base over another base you could very quickly lose detail with you know without um, very very easily I know the English good um, so that second layer has to be thinned down so here comes the Mournfang Brown I'm clearly doing a lot I'm clearly hitting with a hairdryer off camera um, I go through a lot um, of this I'm thinning it by the way with Vallejo um, thinner medium which is like a small liquid resin and which I prefer for this over water purely because a it keeps it neutral because I'm lazy when it comes to my, my, my paint water and also I just I tend to find it works really, really well. And I just like that the Mournfang Brown over um, Dryer Bark gives it a really good, earthy, natural tone. Um, I then mix in little layers of Pallid Witch Flesh, then just to highlight it up. I think I went a bit too far on this one, and I had to bring it back down again. And just, again, just hitting it on edges, hitting it on lines. Um, just It brings it up quite nicely i think every painter regardless of skill has some recipe in their arsenal that they're they're really pleased with 
this and my recipe for doing denim, which if you've ever played Malifaux or painted Malifaux miniatures, you need a recipe for doing denim and the amount of jeans and cowboys that you, you end up painting in your time. This this sort of mourn, dryad, oh, good shot, nice. Yeah, okay, yeah, back on camera, good. This sort of dryad bark, mournfang brown, pallid witch flesh as a leather recipe, I absolutely love. I use it too often, but hopefully, if you can't tell from this video, I'll stick a decent picture up at the end once everything is done. I love how it comes out. So, the only big tip I'd ever say for miniatures painting is work inside out, which is why I started flesh and moved on the out. So now into metal detailing. So that is uh, the base GW1 iron breaker. Is that what it's called? I forget. This is a brilliant video. Um, going on to all of the metal parts. They will be then hit with the Necron compound dry brush. And when thoroughly dry, and I do find that metallics take a little bit time, more time to dry than everything else, especially if they've been watered down. When thoroughly dry, I'll hit it with the Null Oil uh, ink, which I love. More hair dryer time, on it goes. Um, I was looking for um, the Zandri Dust. I've clearly run out, so I go with a Carrick Stone in an effort to do a bone-like handle on the daggers and the axes that are on. Uh, Oxy's waist and the axe in his hand highlighted up with a screaming skull and then I'll hit that with a sepia wash afterwards and then lastly it is a scrag brown for the uh, all important beard and hair and then highlighted up with oh I've forgotten let me just have a look in the pile oh brilliant it's Quality radio, this quality TV. So, Scrag, sorry, Doom Bill Brown and Scrag Brown are the two colours that I then highlight up to give uh, Ox's beard the majesty that it so deserves. So, I have a reasonable amount of time spent playing with butchers, but always with fillets. But because I want to get used to the idea of the important times of triggering legendary plays and the like. Ox seems a good place to get some practice in with that idea before the re release of Blacksmiths. So hopefully, uh, as this video draws to a close, you get the idea. The total paint time for this was about 40 minutes. Um, I, I'm absolutely sure that you will have found on Instagram better painters than I for doing this sort of thing, but I like knocking them out in a quick amount of time. So hopefully on screen what you should be seeing now is a, uh, a nice picture of the following morning from when this was done because I need the light to take a decent picture and also I always find best when working with PVA to do the basing uh, to let that dry overnight before attaching anything. So hopefully that looks alright. I think it's alright. It'll certainly do me for a bit of a test before the blacksmiths come along and you've also seen a sneak peek of my blacksmith's goal. Uh, on screen now hopefully will be a beard. Please click it if you wish to subscribe and be continually updated whenever I upload this nonsense. Similarly there are some links to playlists. Um, please leave me a comment below uh, either encouraging or telling me that I'm rubbish. <laughs> Cheers folks.